G'day folks, Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you another battle report. Now folks, this is one of the old style battle reports, so it's more like a slideshow where I'll show a series of photos and I'm going to talk over and explain what happened, draw some squiggly lines onto the screen. So if you're new to the channel and you're not familiar with these, um, this is, well, the old style of battle reporting that I used to do. Um, if you're not interested in that, then uh, you can click away now. Um, but for everyone else, stick around and enjoy. So this is the first game I ever played with the Blades of Corn, my uh, Corn Bloodbound. And um, once again, they're, they're not painted. But I did make the effort of going out and color coding them into the um, formation or battalion that they're associated with. So I'll, I'll explain that as we go. I'm probably going to take this opportunity um, where I can sit back and be a little bit slower to talk a little bit more about the Corn Bloodbound or the Blades of Corn as we go. Um, so probably grab something to paint folks. You can probably just listen to this one. Um, but there's probably some thematic slides along the way. So this is my opponent's army from, uh, well, I should say, I should introduce the armies first, shouldn't I? Um, it's 2000 points, match play. My opponent is playing Slaves to Darkness and uh, I am playing Corn Bloodbound. So um, on the far left, he has a unit of 10 Chaos Warriors. Then he has the Dragon Without Wings. Now he is proxying that. That is going to be a Chimera or a Chimera, depending on, I don't know, it's probably just a Chimera, but um, I always used to call it a Chimera. Anyways, I'm digressing. So that's what that is. He's got a Demon Prince next to that. He's got a unit of uh, 10 Marauders. Behind that, he's got his unit of Chosen, 10 Chosen, another 10 Chaos Warriors. Then he's got Belakor, the Dark Prince, King of Everything. He's got a Chaos Lord on a Demonic Mount. They're pretty awesome. And then a unit of Knights. I'm not sure what um, marks he's... I think he's got a Chaos Sorcerer in there as well. I'm not sure what um, marks he's running or anything like that, but um, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then my army color coded we have the following so on the far right well there's a little goober that little goober always seems to follow me around everywhere but um, apart from him we've got two corgraths um, anything that's brown is not in a battalion um, anything that's white is in the gore pilgrims battalion anything that red is blood forged so we've got the two corgraths then we have uh, five wrathmongers we have 10 blood warriors we have two slaughter priests we have a relicter aspiring death bringer and then we have the skull grinder at the back there in white we have 20 different skull reavers another unit of 10 blood warriors another unit of five wrathmongers and 10 skull takers. Now I absolutely stuffed up my deployment here because the skull takers are meant to be my killer unit and I put them at the back here thinking that the waves of corn were just gonna die and crumble, parting way for the skull takers to leap through and wreak some havoc. But as you'll see, the game doesn't quite progress like that. So my opponent gave me the first turn, he finished dropping first and um, I just figured, well, I'm corn. So I'm going to run. I'm going to just run across the table and um, kill everything I can. And that's really what we do. We're playing a border war here. So there are four objectives um, that I need to take. I sort of figured I'd divide my force. I'd push straight up in the center and make him head on, take him head on um, and try and force him to defend his center deployment. And then I'd also take this one on the left. I figured if I can um, hold him here in the center, or and then I can take this one over here then I can let him have that right hand one and if he wants to come get my objective he has to get through this pass anyway so I should be able to block him up um, that's my thinking anyways and uh, on the right hand side the two core grass just move up and um, I don't know you know they've just got a buff so they're damaged two now and um, I kind of was keen to see how they're going to go I I still don't like them guys it's my second game with them and um, you'll see in this game they do very well but it's sort of one of those things where you want to take them both individually because an individual core graph has a greater chance of dying to give you blood tithe points um, you still get the same points of them but and if they're two individual you can push them both into the same unit and then you can allocate the wounds onto both of them. You know, they have to divide your attacks against two units as opposed to against one and it just piles up on the one and one dies. And then, so it's sort of like you get as much offensive punch out of having two running independently together. Plus there's a greater chance, you know, one you get double the blood tithes out of them. Plus you can allocate the wounds better. So I think that's probably the better way to do it. But regardless, I'm not sure that... Um, 
you know you still can't find 100 or 200 points to spend better elsewhere um, them getting buffed up to damage two is actually really huge for them um, and I'll talk about that as we go so core grass are on the right and then uh, we go into my opponent's turn so hero phase he does a little bit of hero phase stuff whatever slaves to darkness do or buff here oculus new molecules what is it oculus something rather demonic power and all that sort of stuff goes off um, he fires off a um, I want to say now that there are a few rules that we forgot this entire game so one I didn't use any of my blood forged rules for taking control of any models the whole game and he forgot to use I think it's called dark majesty or whatever it is with Bellacore where you pick a unit and or maybe he did and just didn't do anything he didn't tell me but I don't think we remembered to use that rule so he fired off um, uh, arcane bolt and killed one blood warrior put a wound on another one and then his movement phase it looks like this so he pushes up a line of um, chaos warriors and this was actually kind of cool because I want to see how blood warriors go against chaos warriors right I mean blood warriors are just corn chaos warriors um, they're much of a muchness whereas um, chaos warriors are probably a bit more defensive um, Blood Warriors have more abilities, you know, they have the ability to do a mortal wound on the defense and then when they die they can still pile in an attack as well. So I think they're better um, for 20 more points, you know, for 10 of them, 200 points versus 180. I think they're better and I know that the Zench guys, um, Zench Arcanites, got Zangors as their sort of battle line infantry unit. Um, but I really wish they had have got some sort of flavoured Chaos Warrior in the same way that Korn got Blood Warriors. I would have probably enjoyed that more, I think. So he pushes up like this, Chosen are behind. The unit of Marauders over here sort of blocking that gap. The um, Chimera is, uh, is, in, uh, is sort of angling in. And he's got, it looks like he's got an Aspiring Champion or Aspiring Deathbringer, whatever they're called, um, climbing the mountain. Um, this is after shooting. I think that's his Chimera's breath weapon. Um, does kill a ton more blood warriors. And then that's just what the rest of the board looks like. So on the left here, his Chaos Warriors have moved up to um, contest or take that objective, supported by a Demon Prince, with his um, hero here um, sitting on that mountain. Could go either way. The Chimera looks like it's moving in to support the middle. And then he's got this wall of uh, Marauders, Chaos Warriors, and he's got the Chosen coming up behind. So that's definitely um, going to punch pretty hard. At the moment, he's got his, cha his uh, Chaos Knights, and uh, it looks like Bellacor on that going over to this left objective as well. So I can't really contest that left objective. I kind of just have to, um, I guess I just have to crash against the wall of Chaos Warriors in front of me, um, go full Bloodbound on him, and then hope he does just surround me and come in at me because I sort of realize now that um, come on Bloodbound, you just want to be fighting and you just want to be fighting in any way as possible, as close as possible everything just jammed in together all your units jammed in real close just piling in wherever they can attacking where they can dying where they can you really got to play them um like they are in the books you know they're real just psychotic murderers and um you know i did have to say that i found this game so exciting because when i get to attack i'm excited for what i'm going to kill and then when it's my opponent's turn to kill me I'm still excited because even when I'm dying, I'm still killing. And then when I'm dying, I'm still being rewarded by blood points. <laughs> so it's kind of really fun because at every phase in the game, except for when you're being shot to death, that's not fun. But apart from that, every other sort of combat phase, your opponent's or yours, it's good for you. You're like, yes, this is what we want. So just get your corn in there and freaking brawl. Um, my turn and it looks like this. So on the far left here, um, blood warriors move up they're going to charge uh, supported by wrathmongers and with the skull takers so at this point I'm trying to keep one of my two units of wrathmongers um, close to everything you know I'm really trying to make sure that all of my models get get um, the buff and I was intending to try to keep them that perfect three inches behind my front line so only my unit gets a buff and my opponent's unit doesn't get the buff. Well, sorry, it buffs the models, not the unit. That's important. Um, but I want to say now, in hindsight, don't worry about that at all. Um, just throw your Wrathmongers in there as violently as you can, um, wherever they will fit, and um, do just go nuts. And if your opponent 
uh, gets you know buffs from it and gets more attacks from it it doesn't matter that just means he's going to kill you quicker and believe me the more he kills you the better it is for you um, the more attacks he gets the greater chance my blood warriors have got of doing mortal wounds back on defense rolls and then the more blood warriors he kills the more they get to pile in and attack anyway so just go nuts guys don't just throw your shit in there and fight um i think i've gone a bit heavy-handed here on the left i've got wrathmongers skull takers and blood warriors but um we'll see how it progresses in the middle there my blood warriors move up to meet the challenge and on the right hand side my uh my Korgraths face off against the Chaos Knights. It looks like Noah's brought in a Transformer. He's currently doing a bit of point blank pew pewing on the Chaos Warriors. Um, here's what it looks like after charges. So um, yeah, the Blood Warriors make it into the Chaos Warriors here on the left. That's just 10 against 10. That will be interesting to see what happens. And in the middle here, um, the Wrathmongers and the Blood Warriors have made it into the unit of Chaos Warriors. However, I've only got Wrath, one Wrathmonger into combat there. I've kind of had to conga line them in. My banner, the Blood Secretor banner is planted. So everything is getting a plus one attack and is also immune to Battleshock, which is huge. Like honestly, the, the banner is still so freaking powerful i love it that it doesn't stack now i think that was one of the most broken things and one of the one of the big things i made a video that i didn't put up um onto youtube called what i hate about age of sigma and in there i went through all the shit i hated i will talk about varangard and i talked about blood secretors stacking multiple one you know blood secretors and i really hope that got fixed and did get fixed so that's fantastic um, over here on the left after combat, well, it went really in my favor. So we had um, my Blood Warriors went in. Hang on. So the Blood Warriors really did a good job here on the um, on the the Chaos Warriors. We did play this rule wrong because at this point um, I was playing that it was a unit within three inches of the Wrathmongers gets plus one attack, but obviously it's only the model, um, it's per model within three inches. So these Blood Warriors were getting an extra attack than what they should have, um, and it probably did make a significant difference. I do apologize to my opponent for that, but uh, like I said, it was the first time I played this army. So I've killed five, six Chaos Warriors. He's killed two. Obviously, they are able to pile back in and attack more. So a good showing of just the difference of, um, um, you know, Chaos Warriors versus um, Blood Warriors, I think. Then over here in the middle, um, I've lost one Blood Warrior and I've lost a Wrathmonger as well. This was actually absolutely freaking terrifying and if you're uh, watching this and you're playing against corn bloodbound a lot or the blades of corn um, this is how you want to deal with wrathmongers right you want to get a unit like marauders and you want to fight them with marauders because here i am thinking well you know I don't, i've only got like a five up armor save um, so it's easy to push wounds through on me anything can wound the wrathmongers and normally if the wrathmonger dies and i can take control of a mole and attack back like that's awesome right that's what i want i want the wrathmongers to die but i don't want to take control of one marauder i don't want to take control of one chaos warrior um, so if you see wrathmongers coming across the table you know against you throw your shitty battle line into them um, that's my suggestion as the best way to eliminate them because these guys you don't want wrathmongers against your elite troops it will work out very bad for you um, over here, he's uh, trying to kill my heroes and pick off my heroes. So I think this is his hero phase and he's put a, uh, an arcane bolt or something like that onto my aspiring Deathbringer there. Um, over on the right hand side of the table, his Chaos Knights move forward, positioning for the charge on my two Corgrass. And Belakor flies right here in the middle and his um, Demonic Lord on Mount comes through the middle as well. So there is this gap. Um, the pass to my um, objective is open and um, you know that Chaos Lord and Belakor can do a lot of damage especially when he's sort of getting in the side of my lines I don't have blood warriors or anything to stop him he can get into my heroes and the Cord Blood Mount heroes I mean they're born to fight they're born to die but um, they also offer a lot of supports and buffs and things like my um, blood secretor you know once he goes down it really impacts the army quite hard if you're able to take out the general and the blood secretor then um, you're going to find the punch is uh, is gone really quick but folks here you'll see at the bottom of the table we have the skull grinder he's ready to put his mark of destruction into action 
Um, well, I hope anyways, we'll see what happens. Um, and then for the rest of his movement, his Chimera and his um, Demon Prince both move up on top of this terrain. I tell you what, it's so frustrating because we're playing each one of those ledges on the terrain as one inch. So for me to get up there, it's four inches. Um, but for flying guys, of course, they just ignore that sort of vertical distance and fly over there. So he's sitting right in the middle of me and he's able to breath weapon down, throw sort of magic down, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, he's really going for my my hero pack, which I think is the, the right thing to do. On the left hand side, his chaos warriors that were in combat with my blood warriors have retreated. Um, it was probably a battle he couldn't win unsupported. And um, yeah. And the middle, this is what it looks like. He's chosen have, um, oh, sorry, this, he has retreated his Chaos Warriors out and charged his Chosen in. So very good unit, very good move by my opponent, sort of uh, blocking me up with his Chaos Warriors and then positioning, backing them out and charging the uh, the Chosen in because they're going to just, well, they're going to do the work. Um, you can see down here on the bottom, Bellacore has charged into one of my Slaughter Priests. Um, so my Slaughter Priests with the Book Gore Pilgrims at the moment are able to do um, re-roll their cast. So I can do double Blood Boil um, and I can re-roll any failed attempt. So that's like 2d6 mortal wounds per turn. It's really quite um, devastating. The good news for me is that his Demonic Mount, his Demonic Lord on Demonic Mount, sorry, that was coming in here from the left failed the charge. So um, that's a big relief. But I think my Slaughter Priest is going to die, unfortunately. Um, over here you can see the Chaos Knights have uh, have hit the Corgrass and um, I feel really bad because I've got two brown sprayed Corgrass and he's got these beautiful painted Chaos Knights but um, such is life I guess. And uh, this is what it looks like after combat. So, well, yep, you can see the Blood Warriors got um, smashed by those Chosen. It looks like he's done six wounds to um, to the Blood Warriors and um, he killed a Wrathmonger as well. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, what could I expect, right? Chosen are going to come in and smash me. I've got to be happy, though, because Bellacor here absolutely whiffed against the priest. Well, didn't absolutely whiff, but I think he did four wounds to me, leaving my, my slaughter priest on two, which means I'm still alive and Bellacor's still stuck there. So this is good for me. Um, looks like all the Chaos Marauders have been deleted, though. I think my Wrathmongers could only attack, pretty much only really attack the um, Marauders. And, um, yeah, I was able to wipe most of those out. Um, <laughs> there's still one left though. That's kind of awkward. Um, over here on the right, though, this was like the big shock of the game. So he charged in with his Chaos Knights and couldn't do any damage to me, any wounds at all. Um, yeah, so this was really devastating because all of his Knights on the charge, um, I think it looks like he did one wound there to the Corgrass, or yeah, it wasn't a lot. But the Corgrass attacking back, you know, they're 10 attacks now for two. Um, hitting on threes, winning on threes, negative one rent. So they've got an elite um, stat line, right? An elite sort of troop stat line. Threes, threes, and negative one rent. But then at damage two, it's really quite huge because 10 attacks, you know, hitting on threes, you hit eight times, you wound sort of six times, negative one. He failed his, his saves here, and I did like eight wounds. It was really, really cool because he's removed... Um, or maybe more, I don't know, but he's lost a ton of knights there. He's lost four Chaos Knights in one turn of combat to two Corgrass. So that was a big shock for us with the new Corgrass. They can certainly be effective when they hit and wound. Um, this is what uh, the rest of the table looks like. It's uh, my turn now and my movement. So um, the first thing I do is my unit of Wrathmongers over here on the left-hand side that are kind of useless now, I try and get them to start climbing this hill. Um, I'm hoping I can roll... I, I sort of need like maybe a, a seven inch charge in order to climb up this hill and get in combat with the uh, the demon prince but I, I just need to deal with those guys up there because otherwise i'm going to be stuck i've realized that he doesn't have anything here on the left to contest that objective so my skull takers which have been completely useless the whole time start pushing back across the right to fill in the gap um and then i move my oh this is the best part of everything 20 blood reavers immune to battle shock pushing on bellacore just like screaming idiots just charging Bellacore the Dark Prince. And um, and I just sort of thought if I can get in a charge and just hold Bellacore there, then I'm okay. He can kill those Blood Reavers as much as he wants. I'm not going to suffer any battle shock while my standard's alive. And um, like, go for your life, Bellacore. Kill as many as you can because it's going to take you two turns maybe, two or three turns 
of combat to kill 20 blood reavers that are immune to blood shock and um and it doesn't bother me they're just trash troops right so go ahead and die um the uh, skull grinder though he's pushing up for the chosen i had thought about putting him into bellacore but i just figured with the mark of the destroyer um i think bellacore at the moment's got a three up armor save ignore uh, re-rolling ones so if i don't kill him outright i'm going to lose my skull grinder so better he goes into those um, chosen where i reckon he can do pun me a ton of damage um after charges well yeah it it was fantastic because my Wrathmongers charged up the hill like a bunch of crazy fuckers after blood and got into combat with that Demon Prince. And this is where Wrathmongers are just like so refreshing. Honestly, guys, they are so good. Go buy yourself Wrathmongers because I don't care what I'm fighting with them. You can have like your toughest model, your toughest unit in the world on the table and I'm happy to fight it with Wrathmongers. Even just getting one guy into combat... I don't care. You just throw them out there. I hate to say this, but they're like a jihadi bomb. They're like a suicide vest. You know you're going to die in the name of the blood god, but you're going to take those fuckers with you. And Corn does not care where the blood flows as long as it flows. And um, it's just fun. And honestly, like it's shit for your opponent. It's really shit. And it's a little bit fun to watch them squirm. Like you, you watch them think about this and they think... You know, where am I going to attack? Normally I attack here, but they're Wrathmongers. So if I attack, I'm going to, you know, he's going to take control of my model and kill himself with it anyways. And he's just like, fuck, what do I do? I have to fight. Otherwise, he's just going to kill me. If I don't fight, he's just going to hit me. But if I fight, he's going to take control of me anyway. It's just, it's like a, it's mutually assured destruction. There's no way they can win from it. And um, gosh, it's good. Go buy yourself Wrathmongers, folks. That's that's all I can say. The skull grinder here, he has charged into this unit of Chosen and uh, let me just tell you a little bit about the skull grinder at the moment so he has two attacks base he has plus one attack to his attacks characteristic from the blood secretor he gets plus one attack to his um, attacks characteristic because of the um what do you call it aspiring deathbringer whatever it's called my, my general's command ability and then he has plus one attack from the wrathmonger as well and you double his attack characteristic because of the mark of the destroyer so i actually played this wrong um, I think when I attacked with him here, I attacked with eight attacks. Um, and I think I probably should have only had seven because I did play that the Wrathmongers plus one attack um, went onto his attack characteristic. When it doesn't, it just gives him one more attack. So at the moment, he should have been three attacks uh, base and then doubled with Mark of the Destroyer to six plus one for the Wrathmongers. And I think I played this. So he was actually on eight because he got two from the Wrathmongers. So I do apologize, but um, I don't think it made that big a difference um and the blood reavers get in there and surround bellacore and look at that look at that that is this guy here that's the skull grinder so i nominated him to attack first um he started swinging and chosen started to die um negative one rend it's not the best for killing everything but it's good enough just for going toe to toe with an elite unit or a battle line unit or anything like that you can generally be sure that you're going to absolutely smash shit so hitting on threes wounding on twos negative one rend like seven attacks and damage three um those chosen just absolutely imploded and this was i did 15 wounds Yep, I did 15 wounds um, on this charge, and uh, this was an uncomfortable moment for my opponent when uh, all of a sudden, you know, his chosen were in a position where they were just going to be stomping, chomping through all my shit, and then one charged up skull grinder runs in and um, and obliterates the unit. It's definitely an eye eye opener. Um, this was a combination I'd been trying to get off. I sort of thought about it the night before. And I really couldn't wait to give it a try, and I'm really glad it works um over here yeah the two Corgrass were easily able to kill the last knight um they did take one more wound from the chaos horse though kicked him in the teeth as he was going to bite his head off and uh against bellacore well bellacore killed my slaughter priest and he also killed four blood reavers i think but uh, i'm immune to battle shock at the moment so everything's okay um on the left hand side of the board um i have charged into um his Chaos Warriors, so, you know, he had three or five Chaos Warriors left there against my Blood Warriors, and um, I killed two of his Chaos Warriors, he killed one of my Blood Warriors, and up the top there, um, yeah, this is kind of cool, because he killed two of my Wrathmongers, um, my Wrathmongers, 
Uh, Roniera put like the below. Well, I think, below. I think they put five wounds on the Demon Prince. I'm not sure if I've taken control control of anything and made it attack itself yet. And um, no, I haven't. So we've gone into my opponent's turn now. Yeah. So the, his Demon Prince, um, uh, his Demon Prince attacked and killed two Wrathmongers. I was able to take control of only his Demon Prince at that point, just because I hadn't piled in, so I wasn't close enough to take control of this Chimera. Um, and then I made his Demon Prince attack himself. I fairly kind of whiffed, but ended up putting five wounds total onto his um, Demon Prince after then I, I sort of piled in and attacked as well. Um, my opponent's turn here, and he's thrown an Arcane Bolt, I think, at uh, the Slaughter Priest, trying to finish him off before I make his blood boil. And um, uh, up here, the Chimera has um has gone into combat against the wrathmongers um for his movement actually i'm not sure what i was showing there with the chimera and the wrathmongers i do apologize for his movement his um chaos lord is on the demonic mount is heading for the two core graphs he doesn't want him to take that objective um because at the moment we're kind of tied in points right he's had he held his objective and he's held the one on the right hand side and i've held my objective in in my um territory and i've held the one on the left hand side so i think we're pretty much even on points at the moment um so he's trying to stop my core graphs from taking this one so bellacor just backs out of um all those uh blood reavers there was no point him being stuck there um moves his chaos warriors up three inches away from my um Wrathmongers and Skull Grinder and my remaining um, Blood Warrior just to stop me getting at his objective. And um, yeah. And then um, he opens fire with his Chimera and he takes out the Slaughter Priest with the Breath Weapon. It's really, honestly, with the two um, Slaughter Priests, um, like you're doing, doing double Blood Boils per turn and re rolling any failed attempt. Um, the odds are you're getting one or if not two off and it's sort of one you know one d6 or two d6 mortal wounds per turn it's really quite devastating plus they get a second spell as well so killing those slaughter priests is um, pretty important um up here though this is the mutually assured destruction i spoke about he had a chimera almost on full wounds and um he just didn't know what to do he's in a situation where he says well if i don't nominate my chimera to attack then um then you're going to hit me first and then i'm going to attack and i'm going to be weakened then you i'm going to kill one anyway you're going to take control of me again and i'm going to die or i can just nominate the chimera to attack first at full strength do as much damage to the unit and then you're going to take control of me anyways but hopefully i'll survive you know it's sort of not a very good amount of choices but as it worked out um he attacked um I took control of him and then I attacked and um, killed him. I think that's how it happened. And so, uh, yeah, the, the th five Wrathmongers climbed up on the hill, killed a Demon Prince and a Chimera. And that's the perfect sort of model that you want these in combat with, you know, monsters, things like that. Um, just make them attack themselves and uh, it's so strong. Because if effectively these five Wrathmongers had the hitting power of five Wrathmongers plus a Demon Prince plus a Chimera you know, um, for like two turns of combat. It's really, really huge. Um, over here on the right hand side, well, this is actually where the game ended folks because he charged his demonic Lord on Mount into my Corgraths, did uh, a couple of wounds to one, and then they ate his Chaos Lord. Um, they took his skull and they took them and, and they vomited it up at the base of, uh, of Korn's throne. So, um, yeah, the Corgrass did really well in this game, and it was at this point where it was going to be my turn. Um, you know, I was just going to take that objective. Um, he didn't really have anything left on the table except for a handful of Chaos Warriors and uh, and Bellacor, I think. So um, my opponent didn't think he could win from here. Um, I agree with him, and um, that's where we ended the game. Um, that was my first game with um, the Blades of Corn. Uh, I did make some mistakes with the rules and um, the main one being the range on the Wrathmongers and the Wrathmongers. Firstly, the Wrathmongers don't increase your attack characteristic by one. They give you one extra attack and it's only for all models within three inches, um, not for units within three inches. I think that's probably the only real rule that I played wrong. Um, so if you're new to this army, don't make that rule. But, um, but I was really, really happy with this army after 
this victory. I just felt really good. Um, I kind of felt bad for my opponent because I did say in another uh, one of my shit and talks that Slaves to Darkness are probably in a good spot now because you have the option to mark them all Zench if you want and get Destiny Dice or mark them all Corn if you want and, you know, get the uh, the Blood Tithe sort of situation. Um, and you can also very easily just add in a few models, Sword of Priest, or Blood Secreta, whatever, a few heroes to change the flavour of the Slaves to Darkness army to more, you know, the corn sort of situation or the Zench situation with just a handful of models. Like you don't have to add a lot in to build on what you've got already. But um, like my opponent said, he said that's not what this army ever started to be. Um, started out to be it always started out to be a slave to darkness army and so he's going to keep it that way and um, in the current meta slaves to darkness don't have the ability to um, compete with things like zench and um, and corn bloodbound they just don't have the synergies um, they don't have the elite they've only got chosen and uh, i tend to agree with that i think you really need to branch out with them and add other models in but um that's it, folks. That's the end of the battle report. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I couldn't make a normal battle report this time because there was like 12 tables going at the club. The club was absolutely full and it was just noisy as hell. So you all saw from my tournament battle report, you know, there's so much background noise, it's a little bit uncomfortable. So I thought I'd just go back to the old slideshow and uh, take it from there. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll talk to you next time.